Vista. Um, we do nonprofit education and promote secularism in all endeavors of life. Um, we do lectures like this uh, about science, philosophy, bi-weekly bi on Fridays. So the next one coming up will be April 10th, right? No, I'm sorry, that's not very well. Yeah, so it is April 10th. It's uh, Amanda Peet will be here to do her part two on physics. What well, is um, Friday? Should I not come? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what date did we decide April 3rd? It is Friday. It is April 10th. It is April 10th. Sorry, we're committed to that now. We can't change it. <laughs> <laughs> Just get to church. <laughs> go to church and then you can come here. <laughs> it's a balanced day. <laughs> so yeah, so Amanda, uh, she'll, Professor Pete will be doing her part two on string theory. And then following the second, two weeks after that, we have David Stamos from York U coming to talk about the myth of universal human rights. Uh, so both of those should be pretty interesting. And there's also films and book clubs. I encourage everyone to pick up the flyer on their way out for everything and to sign up if you haven't signed up because Justin sends out fantastic weekly emails. Um, also, right now we're in the middle of our friendship drive. Uh, we're trying to reach 1,000 members by the end of the year. Uh, we're currently at 350. We just got to move the hand forward 50 members, uh, so we were pretty excited about that. Uh, so I encourage you all to become a member. There's lots of benefits you would get in for free, and if you had to pay to get in today and you want to become a member, that price can go towards your membership, no problem. Um, you can get discounts on conferences. There's lots of different incentives, and so if you're interested, please feel free to talk to Justin or myself or Shadi up at the front, and one of us will give you a nice little rundown of what is entailed for you if that's an option. Yes. Thanks, Katie. I'm going to uh, move on to introduce our distinguished guest for the evening. Um, it's a great pleasure, actually, for me to welcome the new leader of the Center for Inquiry. Uh, Dr. Ronald Lindsay is the President and Chief Executive Officer and Senior Research Fellow at the Center for Inquiry Transnational, headquartered in Amherst, as most of you know, Amherst, New York. Dr. Lindsay received his PhD in Philosophy from Georgetown University with a concentration in Bioethics. He has had several articles published in peer-reviewed journals, such as the Journal of Law, Medicine and Ethics, the Kennedy Institute of Ethics Journal, and the American Journal of Bioethics. The book that he's here to talk about, Future Bioethics, Overcoming Taboos, Taboos Myths, and Dogmas, was favorably reviewed in the prestigious science journal Nature, which observed that the book is, quote, readable, reasoned, and accessible, and successfully challenges the taboos of bioethics. We'll hear more about that book shortly. The book, I should say, is also on sale at the back. We'll have more information about the sale of costs and other uh, such matters at the end of the event. Dr. Lindsay is a graduate of the University of Virginia School of Law and was a practicing lawyer for over 25 years before joining the Center for Inquiry. He was a lead attorney in approximately 20 federal and state appellate cases and has written approximately 50 appellate briefs, including briefs in several prominent Supreme Court cases addressing constitutional law issues. He is therefore considered an expert in church state matters. Please help me welcome Dr. Ronald Lindsay. Thank you, Justin, for that, uh, those kind words. Uh, and as Justin indicated, I'm here to talk tonight about uh, religion, bioethics, and public policy. In my view, uh, religion should have no place in government, and in particular, should have no role in formulating public policy. That's really all I have to say tonight, so. <laughs> Very short speech. Uh, I suppose I should say a few words in defense of that proposition. And actually, before I, I begin to defend that proposition, I want to make clear about what I'm not advocating. I'm certainly not saying that if someone is religious, they can't be part of the government. Although I suppose if one's going to be the science ministry, one would hope that they have. <laughs> you know, the reality of evolution. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that the government officials, all regular citizens, can't be inspired by their religious beliefs. Uh, the source of one's inspiration or motivation is, to a large extent, a matter of indifference to us, I assume, as long as that motivation simply means they have a desire to act responsibly and to respect others in the moral community. Uh, what concerns me is the role that religion often has in influencing and shaping public policy. And in particular, I believe that religion has no, no role to play in justifying public policy. 
That's what I'm really concerned about. Uh, from my perspective, uh, certainly in a democracy, uh, discourse about public policy should be framed entirely in secular terms, and public policy should be based on secular considerations. Well, why do I take that view? First of all, as I said, in a democracy, uh, but it actually apply to any sort of government that uh, where these citizens are free to discuss and debate public policy and what the government feels is a need that justifies public policy to its citizens. Because one clear prerequisite to debating public policy is that citizens have to be able to understand, evaluate, and discuss the reasons that people offer for public policy. And if we rely on religion as a means of formulating public policy, you just can't do that. You can't debate religion. I want to give you a couple examples. Uh, Same-sex marriage is an issue that people are talking about in the United States, I assume in Canada as well. And if someone takes a position, for example, that well, homosexual activity is an abomination because that's what the Old Testament says, therefore I'm never going to favor same-sex unions or same-sex marriage, that's basically the end of the discussion, isn't it? I mean, what are you going to say to that person? You can't say it. I mean, they've said this is the word of God, that controls, you're never going to change my mind. So, I mean, you know, people can offer pros and cons for same-sex union and same-sex marriage, but if someone says, my religion says, this is the case, end of discussion. And it's for other areas as well. I just want to pick on socially conservative views. Even socially liberal views sometimes are influenced by religious dogma. Let's say, for example, that someone is opposed to the death penalty, and there are a lot of reasons why, secular reasons, why someone might be opposed to the death penalty. But if they say, well, I'm opposed to the death penalty because, uh, you know, one of the commandments says don't kill, and I believe in the sanctity of life, and therefore we should never uh, allow the state to execute it. Well, again, that's going to be the end of the discussion. Religion is a conversation stopper. You can't pursue it further. Now, you might say, especially since CFI is an organization that actually says, well, we should be free to critique religion, you might say, well, you know, why can't we discuss those, you know, the background, you know, whether you're relying on the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran, or whatever. Well, in theory, you can, but if you try to do that in the context of discussing public policy, discussions will be interminable. Because what are you going to do? You're going to say, oh, well, that's not how I interpret the Old Testament, and by the way, I don't believe in God anyway, and let's talk about the proof of God's existence. I mean, debates like that will go on for not just weeks, months, but years. So if we're going to look to religion as a basis for formulating public policy, we'll never get anywhere. And I believe in a democracy where we rely on citizens to contribute to debates about public policy, religion really shouldn't have any role to play. If I could have someone hit the next slide for me. One problem, though, is that morality does have a role to play in formulating public policy. Now, I mean, a lot of public policy has nothing to do with morality, right? I mean, if you have public policies about parking regulations and things like that, really don't, impl don't implicate any moral pre principles. Uh, and even sometimes we have moral principles we may believe in, but we nonetheless have laws that perhaps aren't completely consistent with those moral principles. But I think it is true that at least for some public policies, we look to morality for guidance. Uh, certainly the areas I'm going to be talking about tonight, for example, assistance in dying, it seems like moral principles have a role to in formulating what public policy we should have. Well, the people who are religious will say, if that's the case, don't you have to look to religion? Because, as this esteemed gentleman assures us, and many other religious leaders, I decided, I was only going to use the one picture over here with the traditional thing, but I thought I'd give him a jolly look with the Santa hat as well. Because <laughs> uh, he's often accused of being too grim, and you know, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and take him with him. Uh, Pope Benedict has said, and obviously many other religious leaders have said this, morality depends upon a vision of life firmly anchored in the religious dimension.